Hi, everybody. How are we doing? Good, good, good. Um, my name is Kevin Willer, and uh, I've been asked to do the easiest part of this panel, which is just ask the questions. Um, but I would love, I'm going to sit. Um, I would love to get audience participation at some point um, as we go through this. So um, if you guys have any cool questions for this awesome panel, uh, you know, keep them in mind, and, and maybe towards the end we'll. Uh, We'll save a couple minutes to ask questions. So, um, so I am I am thrilled to be joined by these three, you know, rock stars, rock star panel. Um, it's a neat panel for me specifically because I know Matt pretty well. We hang out a little bit, um, but I haven't gotten to know uh, Ben and Charlie as well. So um, this is really kind of exciting for me to learn a lot about what's going on, what you guys are seeing, um, especially in in Des Moines and kind of the greater Midwest, and think a little more regionally about capital and all that. Um, you know, as JB just spoke about, we see a lot of venture capital uh, flowing specifically into Chicago right now, so we'll touch on that. Um, the Illinois Innovation Index recently reported that I think in the first two quarters of this year, about $866 million uh, venture capital flew in, uh, fl flowed, flowed into Chicago, or flowed into Illinois, but a lot of it in Chicago. So um, not least of which um, Matt is responsible for a bit of that um, at Grubhub. So, with that, I'm going to introduce the three panel, or I'm going to ask the three panelists to introduce themselves, and I'm going to also ask you to do a question that I, I stole from my Google days, uh, which is you got to mention your first rock concert, so we'll get to know you guys a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to start with Matt because he's the easiest target to pick on. Thank you, um, Matt Maloney. I founded Grubhub. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's a service to place online orders uh, for delivery and pickup from your favorite local restaurants. And as Kevin said, we've been growing incredibly fast as of late, multiple, uh, multiple rounds, acquisitions, a whole bunch of stuff going on. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, so I have a fair amount of experience in um, funding new ventures, uh, bootstrap stage, uh, the Series A, Angels, Series B, C, D, um, now I guess to that's what some would consider late stage. Um, but so I'm excited to do this, and my first rock concert was Stevie Wonder. Nice. And I'm going to qualify that as rock. What year was that? Was awesome. Um, God, it was in the it was in the 80s. In the 80s. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks, man. Try it. I'm not just thinking about concerts. Um, <laughs> might be Depeche Mode. Um, nice. But I'm not sure when it was because they still tour. So. <laughs> right. um, my name is Charlie O'Donnell. I'm uh, principal first round capital. Uh, basically, first round, we like to be early investors, obviously, given the name. Uh, I've spent all of my life in the five boroughs of New York. Uh, every now and then, they let me out. And, but we look sort of nationally. I think the thing about uh, what we do is we work pretty intensively with entrepreneurs, particularly in the first 12 to 18 months, because we feel like that's where you know, we have half a team and they need help with recruiting or they're looking for product market fit and all that sort of stuff. And so, um, you know, we, we tend to work more locally, but, but certainly open to, uh, to doing investments across the country. In fact, uh, the first deal that I led at first round was in a Louisville-based company called Backup of Five, which ultimately <coughs> moved to Boston, but started in, in, uh, in Kentucky. Nice, awesome. Thanks, Charlie. Ben? Uh, my name is Ben Milne. Um, I'm from Des Moines, Iowa. Um, I'm the CEO and founder of a company called Dwalla. Um, what Dwalla is is essentially it's a way to bypass credit and debit interchange fees. So um, it's a payment network that bypasses the current system entirely and kind of exists entirely on its own. So um, it's kind of why I'm here. Um, first rock concert I think was uh, Ben Harper and Jack Johnson. Nice, nice. In Des Moines? Uh, Luther College, I think. There we go. All right. Nice. Well, thanks, guys, for sharing your first rock concert and uh, giving us a little background on yourselves. Um, you know, I think the first thing we should hit on real quick um, to kind of tee this all off, and I, I'm sure you guys will have different perspectives on this because you've raised different amounts of money or you've invested in many different types of companies. Um, you know, in today's day and age where, you know, you're able to use technology platforms to build businesses, you don't need quite as much capital as you might have need, needed maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, um, to really get a company off the ground, really capital efficient, a lot of bootstrapping going on. Um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, 
do you need to raise capital to be successful? I mean, and, and I mean, you guys have raised, so talk a little bit about how you went through that process. And Matt, I know this has been a few rounds over a lot of years, so, um, so I wanna jump on that question first. I mean, I can address that first. It's, I would say you never raise capital just to raise capital. It's not a signal of, well, it is not success in itself. Um, and so what we talk about a lot is what's the opportunity to invest and what amount of money do we need to take advantage of that investment opportunity. Mm -hmm. In our case, when we were in Chicago, we had built this fantastic unit model of restaurants and diners and menus and it was really working well and we had to go, we wanted to expand. Mm -hmm. uh, and in our, in our model, you have to outlay cash and capital in advance to collect the menus, to go and sign up the restaurants and then to market it actually to diners so that you can kickstart a two-sided network model. And that's specifically to my model, so we required capital to expand markets. Um, we raised a very small amount. We raised $1 million to go to San Francisco, Boston, and New York City. So that's pretty extraordinarily capital efficient uh, for when we started. And we were able to quickly get the, the model off the ground in each market. And that's really what I would say what you have to do is do as much as possible with as little as possible. Be scrappy when you're founding your, your ventures. Because by doing that, you're going to learn the lessons. You're going to optimize your product. The first thing you need to do is go to your customers and sell to them. Even before you have a product, say, this is what I'm going to build. We did that with restaurants. We're going to build this. Will you pay for it? They said yes. And I've, I've talked to some entrepreneurs who are in the incredible lucky circumstance of saying, OK, if you are going to buy it, then buy it. Prepay for it. I'll give you a 50% discount. And that's their capital funding. And it's just accelerating the revenues. It's, it's a fantastic way to do it. Um, we ended up raising more and more and more money because as we scaled and we built this fantastic model that, that really was accelerating, we realized that we just needed more cash for sales and marketing. And it was just straight business expansion. It wasn't more for core capital sustainability for the company. Um, it was just <coughs> tell more people about it and get more restaurants signed up. And that's, that's really where all of our rounds, I think we raised three million bucks in total to actually build the company and then the next $81 million has been just straight scale and turbocharge. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll answer it in two ways. Uh, one, I like to think about <coughs> that entrepreneurs hire their investors um, and they sort of pay them in equity, essentially. Like, I come with money and, and you know, the, technically the money is for the equity, but if, if I'm just money, I'm probably not worth it. Um, and, and I see time and time again, and this happens a lot in New York, right, because there's, there's tons of money in New York, as there's tons of money in Chicago. There may not be tons of angel money or enough angel money or seed and all that sort of stuff, but it's a big city, so there's plenty of capital. And there are lots of entrepreneurs uh, in New York who just take the first 500 that shows up at their door, mm -hmm. whether it's some random real estate person or a hedge fund, you know, a trader or whoever. And, and without fail, I would say nine out of 10 of those entrepreneurs come back and say, you know, I, I wish I would have taken smarter money. I wish I would have taken money from somebody who was willing to, who, who could help me build my company mm -hmm. because sure, I needed cash to pay for a developer or two, but I didn't know how to manage them properly. I didn't know, you know, how to vet that team or I didn't really understand what product management was and, and, and get that in there. So um, I think, more so than just getting money, you really want to get smart people around the table. And some of those people, like us, we come with money, and that's the standard deal for getting us involved. But we like to think we sort of add a lot more value. Um, the other thing we do when we work with companies, we think about seed rounds as an opportunity to prove, disprove, or de-risk a thesis. Right. right? So what are you doing with this, this money, and, and are you proving out that, you know, uh, that, that restaurants will buy into this model, right? And, and you know, because at the end of this, we should know, like, is this working or not? And so, you know, there's some elements of money that you take to sort of grow the company, but I think in the initial stages, um, it's more like a test. And I think it's perfectly fine to spend some money to save yourself money later on to prove whether or not the test works out. That makes sense, that makes sense. Ben, what's your perspective? You know, I think that the, um, fundamentally, you gotta ask yourself why you want the money, right? Is it because you just wanna raise, which, like you said, is never the right reason to do it, but it's kind of what does success mean to you and is 
raising that capital going to get you closer to success? Is it about taking money from one individual who sold their last investment inside of your space? He's probably going to help you, you know, grow the value of your company. And I think that you know that's that's one reason to take money. Mm -hmm. um, I think that in our case. We're in payments, so payments is a, a highly regulated market, in case anyone was wondering. Um, so it's like, if I take money from investor A, I only need a million dollars. If I take money from investor B, I need $10 million. Now, which one's going to take more of my company? I mean, it, that's an easy choice, right? So I think that it's which problem are you trying to solve, and how does the money that you're bringing in solve that problem? And if you can really solve problems and bring in money and bring people to the table who are exceptionally smart to help you grow your company, that's a no-brainer, take it. Absolutely. There are plenty of times actually yeah. where I tell entrepreneurs that they shouldn't take money from us. Right. And where I say, you know what, hey, if you could grab you know, 200 grand from some angels and right. flip this company for a $10 million exit and that's your first time as an entrepreneur, that's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's a pretty yeah. good deal, right? And you don't yeah. necessarily, I don't know how many people here have like five million bucks in their bank account, but like that'd be a pretty good start. And then the next time you did something, you wouldn't have to necessarily come to us, but you might want to because I gave you the good advice before not to take money from us. Well, let's talk about that because that, that's actually interesting. I, the, the lines are blurring, especially in the early stage raises of, you know, you have your angels, the angel groups that, you know, get together and they, then you've got your super angels, then you've got VCs that are acting like angels or coming down to the earliest, you know, levels just to maybe put an option down or, or a bet down so they can do the follow on later. Uh, you know, how do you decide from all these these different capital sources it's a good time to raise right but how do you decide which route to go and how I guess how did you pick your investors or did they pick you or how did that all work um, so it's a good question besides paying the <laughs> highest price yeah without getting in trouble let me let me answer that question a different way I really like the way Ben did it Ben went uh, to a bunch of strategic banks correct yeah I, I would say that I'm in Des Moines Iowa Des Moines is not a venture hotbed so like, I might as well be a fucking leprechaun raising money in Des Moines. Um, so in my case, it was, I realized that I couldn't probably get that 10 million bucks. And the idea of like finding a Kleiner or a Sequoia or something like that, I mean, that, that's stuff I read about on the internet. That's not a part of my daily life, right? So- But you ended up nailing it. You did it. You got it from like the most strategic investors possible. I th and what Charlie was saying, like- Yeah, I don't know if it was totally intentional. I think I'm trying to say, I fell into the right thing. And uh, yeah. thank you. I just don't want too much credit for that because <laughs> the we community. We'll expect it from you in the future. Yeah, no kidding, right? Own it, damn it. Own it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah br brilliant. Glad I did it. No. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, so we talked to a lot of a, a local seed stage. We, we, wanted to make, we wanted Chicago money for our first round because we wanted to make sure we were able to tap into our investors' experience. So we talked to a lot of different people, and we just found a group that we really liked. Mm -hmm. And that was what it was for us. It wasn't incredibly strategic. Neither of uh, the people we worked with really came from a background of doing what we did. We did bring in angel money um, from people that, that were really able to, to drive a lot of strategy on our board. Um, but that's, we, you know, we did what Charlie's talking about. We put together a team of people who worked really well together, were really smart and really strategic, and we just focused. And we really focused hard until we, re we built the business out. And then we went and we actually got a, a big slug from a, a very strategic West Coast firm. It was benchmark because the guy that invested in us was the lead investor in OpenTable. And essentially what we're doing is OpenTable for pickup and delivery. And so the, the alignment was ideal for us. And that, that's why we made this, the decisions that we did with our investors. But these are critical decisions for, for early stage companies. And if you're thinking about making some of these decisions, talk to someone who's done it before and preferably multiple times. We had. Um, well, you know Chuck Templeton really well. Sure. And Chuck Templeton was the founder of OpenTable, uh, and he's local, and we met him a year before our first round, and he played a, a pivotal role in our early development. You, you just said uh, something's really key in terms of working with people who've done it before. Um, one easy way, I think, to sort of navigate the you know, all of the, the big funds doing small things and individuals and all that sort of stuff is find somebody who does the kind of deal they're going to do with you on a regular basis, right? right? So, you know, there's some people who say, well, you know, don't take seed investments from big venture capital firms. 
they're big firms in some of our sort of angel sized deals that really, really help companies and really do a great job with them. Um, there are other firms that don't return the company's phone call if they you know, don't have 20% ownership. Right. I won't say who those are. Maybe if you come and see me later, I might say it. But um, I think you know, we do what we do on a regular basis, and we don't pretend to be anything else, right? And so that's why you know, 12 to 18 months in, you know, uh, after you've gotten the big round from Benchmark or whoever, we might come off the board. You know, because we're not necessarily going to be front and center in taking your company from ten million dollars of revs to hundred million dollars of revs. But to get that first customer, we're going to be the, the right intro. So I think it's just you know working with people who've done it before, and that doesn't necessarily mean people have done this exact model, because I think we count on the the entrepreneur for the industry expertise, the insight. I mean, I'm the uh, I led an investment in a direct sales jewelry company called Chloe and Isabel. I'm, I can barely dress myself, right? And uh, this is not, I'm not the target customer. Yeah. Chantel knows jewelry. I can help her hire. Absolutely. That makes sense. Ben, did you want to say anything else besides the leprechaun piece? No. <laughs> no, I'm glad you liked that, though. Um, I, well, all right, so let's hit on that. You guys have talked a little bit about this. Let's take a Midwest view or a, a, a Chicago view or an Iowa view. Um, you, you both have, you've raised money locally, but then also raised it in other places. Um, you've looked at deals early here. You know, is the Midwest a good place, I guess, to invest? Um, and then for the entrepreneurs, is it, you know, why did you go outside Chicago? Could you have raised all that money here? Um, it sounds like strategic partners and all of that, but did you think about maybe raising it all here? Um, so talk about Midwest venture capital specifically. I you want to start? I'm, I'm fine, yeah. Um, there's phenomenal. VC firms, uh, small, medium, and large here. I mean, JB was talking about the one that he's a part of, uh, New World. And that's a great group, and I know them well. In our case, we wanted the strategic money, and we wanted the person who had done the same business model in a different sector, but was very similar. And so for us, it was, it was just a great match. Um, I think the, the Midwest venture capital scene is very vibrant. Uh, and it's, it keeps getting bigger and better and faster and hotter, and that's really exciting, and that's attracting a lot of people uh, to Chicago. Now, I don't have as much experience in Des Moines or other Midwestern cities. I know that there's a lot of tech innovation going on in Indianapolis, for example. Scott from Exact Targets backstage. That's, right. um, that's a great company. I think that in, in the entrepreneurial ecosystem, when you have a lot of VC money, it really tends to draw people into the urban areas. Mm -hmm. So on the West Coast, you have a lot of activity near San Francisco. You have a little bit less, but still a lot in, in uh, LA. On the East Coast, you have Boston. You have uh, New York. Um, but you don't really see as much in Delaware or other, you know, you just, you tend to, there tend to be magnets. And it's because that's, that's where the, the, the money is and where you get a high density of talented individuals. Mm -hmm. And as an entrepreneur starting a company, you need to find four developers, two marketing people, uh, you know, like there's specific people that you need and it's much more difficult to find that. Um, even perhaps in Des Moines, I don't, I don't know how, how you put your team together, but that's, that's really where I see. Uh, Des Moines is great for uh, building teams and it's kind of like if you're building a startup that gets any attention in Des Moines, you stick out like a sore thumb. I mean, everybody in town knows what you're doing. Um, I kind of think about building, <clears throat> excuse me, startups is kind of like following a roadmap, right? And it's pretty predictable, seed, A, B, earn it along the way, grow your revenues, everybody gets super rich, phenomenal exit, everybody's very happy, right? It's kind of like the dream roadmap. Well, you get inside of smaller communities outside of the Midwest, and Chicago is interesting because it might as well be its own country. I mean, in the sense that you have this ecosystem here that doesn't affect really the rest of the Midwest. Right. So you have segments of like Kansas City, Omaha, and Des Moines that are all trying really hard to build it, but I mean, shit, how many people are in Chicago versus Des Moines? It's gonna take forever, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so in our case, it's kind of what the disconnect is on that roadmap between like, in our case, probably it's like an A and a B or a C and how that works. We're going to have to find ways to connect to the outside world. Mm -hmm. I mean, the concept of that we could do all of it in Des Moines, as much as I might piss someone off by saying this, it's just not possible. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have the whole ecosystem, but talent acquisition in Des Moines is, is not difficult. There's a ton of people working in principal, EMC, Pioneer, Wells. 
or even PayPal and Omaha and First Data and Omaha that have really interesting domain space in the financial market uh, who are brilliant and like, not to be a jerk, but they work in a cubicle. I mean, they're looking for something better. Um, so that's really helpful for us. Quick follow up and then Charlie, I want you to answer that one. Um, what could we do? What are some ideas? We're ideas week. What are some ideas that we could do to um, compete with the coast and you know maybe take more of a regional approach? Which Chicago maybe is the center of it, but um, there's a lot of great talent and resources and universities and all that around the Midwest. What could we do? Throw out a big ass bus to Kansas City, Omaha, Des Moines, bus people to one event, bring them to do a demo night, put VCs in the audience, fly them in from New York, the Bay Area, and bring them in from Chicago and basically say, you're smart, come here, we'll pay for it. Let them round them up, bring them in, and. I think, and we're happy to, yeah. you know, speaking as the New York VC who got yeah. flown in, like, yeah, we're, I'm, I'm happy to show up, and I have gone to similar conferences in Miami, in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and for me, it's not necessarily like, I don't think of this as, uh, you know, a very high percentage chance that I walk in here and fund somebody. But I'm getting to know you guys, and I'm sure I'll get to meet other people. And so I'm, I'm, I'm getting to meet folks who, who are the local champions. And just to be able to have that conversation and say, yeah, we're willing, we're willing to do a deal here. So give us a heads up when there's interesting companies and build those relationships over time. Because you know, it's, it's really strong when, when everyone in your local community is always one introduction away from you know, a first round or Sequoia, you know, name your investor, right? You don't all need connections to that person, but at least it can be closer. Right. Um, I think relative to the, the question about, you know, is this a good place to invest, Silicon Valley VCs investing in Silicon Valley companies as a percentage of all the deals done in the U.S. is getting smaller, right? Mm -hmm. Both companies outside the valley are growing because you know, you don't necessarily need to build the tech at Stanford or MIT or wherever anymore, right? You, you know, people are doing it in their garages and dorm rooms and, you know, uh, office parks and wherever. And, and also there's more diversified sources of money, right? I think as, um, you know, the financial markets hiccup and people sort of look around and different pools of money come online and say, you know, well, where are we going to get this return that we're looking for, or even we've seen like with the whole Madoff situation, mm -hmm. that there are angel investors going, you know what, I, I don't want to toss it to some guy I met at the sports club. I'd rather give it to two people that I can help, right. that I see that they're working, that I see that they're not going over budget, and you know, I have a shot if I take some of my you know, wealth and, and put it in that. So there's much more of a diversity of that sort of you know, insular you know, valley ecosystem going on, and mm -hmm. I think it's causing a lot of the VCs in the valley to you know, pick up their heads from their very, very competitive environment and say, you know, we should, we should take a, a swing through the Midwest and just, you know, be aware of what's going on. So I think people are willing to do that. And things. companies like Grubhub that are showing success over time are, they're kind of creating a cluster here, right? Where you're like, hey, I can go there and see a bunch of folks at once. I don't, you know, have to just go for one deal or something like that. And, and soon you'll have the Grubhub mafia, the way there's the PayPal mafia yep. and, and everybody who, you know, when they get their, you know, multi-billion dollar exit, they'll become angels and new entrepreneurs and there'll be a whole network there. We're gonna hold to Matt to that when he has his multi-billion dollar exit. You have to be Grub an Hub Mafia. You're already an angel investor. But, yeah. but but truly though, I mean, do your investors when they come in to visit, do they say, hey, can you introduce me some sure. other opportunities here? I've made tons of connections. And there is so much interest in Valley VC firms investing in Midwest companies right now because, um, well, for a variety of reasons. Um, one of them is that uh, entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley, they have very inflated views of, of their projects and their valuations. Um, and I'm not saying we're selling ourselves short here at all, um, but there is not just, you know, Silicon Valley company, VCs investing in Silicon Valley companies, it's not just that, that constant relationship. They're, they're looking for more deal flow, they're looking for more opportunity, they're looking for companies like Grubhub and Groupon. I mean, that's the, that's the company that's kind of bringing us all here together. I'd, I've, I have not met a VC yet when I tell them what we're doing at Grubhub that they don't say, I will be on a plane this week. I mean, the planes are just, that's, that's the lifestyle. If you're going to be investing, in, especially in seed stage, you fly a lot. Right. Um, and even if you're a Valley VC. The other, the, other kind of that question, the other part of the answer to your question about building a regional uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem is really the talent. And mm -hmm. 
you know, like Ben said, there's, there's great talent in Des Moines, and there's phenomenal talent here in Chicago, not just in technology, but in all sorts of areas. I mean, marketing, there's, there's the biggest CPG companies are here. You know, I pulled someone who, had, who spent years at Unilever as a brand manager to run our brand, and she's doing an incredible job because she has years of experience doing stuff like this. Right. And so I, I have had my last two VPs that we hired, one was from Seattle out of Expedia, and the other one was out of New York, actually, out of Virgin. Mm -hmm. And so we are able to bring top talent here, and it's not what it used to be. Ten years ago, I said, oh, I don't know if I really want to do that. Now it's like, well, there's great talent. I mean, look at the, the people Groupon's bringing in. I mean, you can, people are willing to move here. Well, this is the capital panel, not the talent panel, but I'd just do a quick follow-up. I remember you saying when you raised your round in the spring that you were seeing a lot of resumes come in from the coast, mm -hmm. people willing to potentially move here for a job with a great company that just raised a, a nice round of capital from top tier venture folks. So yeah. that, is, that is definitely a trend. Um, all right, you know, we've got this massive clock in front of us and I see that I have four minutes left. Um, so is there any like burning questions that someone has in the audience or I'll do another follow up? Single sentence questions. Yeah, single sentence, yes, sir. yes right here in front. So, so to Matt, you heard it, but just for the rest of the audience, how did, how did you put together your core team when you were starting out to help you get to the next level and raise some capital? So I founded Grubhub with uh, my co-founder, Mike Evans. Um, and the two of us were really the core team for the first couple of years. And we added, the first employees we added, one was uh, a, a guy to sign up restaurants because we couldn't be in as many restaurants as we wanted to be. And the second was a graphic designer. So those weren't really core team, although they were initial team because I'm a terrible artist and Mike's even worse than I am. And so we had to get somebody who could, who could reflect what we were trying to do for the consumer um, experience. After that, we knew we, that our first strategic hire was a VP of sales and he was doing sales. He, he was the Midwest regional manager for StubHub, which is kind of funny. Uh, as they rolled out across the country, I said, hey, we're at Grubhub, why don't you come over here? It's kind of the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> They're all just hubs. <laughs> I talked to the founders of StubHub actually, and he's like, did you copy my name? I was like, no, I was around before you were, but you don't know that. Um, <laughs> so anyway. Um, Good answer. Um, question, any other questions? Someone yell it out. Good question. You might be best to answer I, that. Well, no, no, no. I mean, I think, I mean, any of you guys, or in in the Midwest. I mean, is there, think, is this going to become, are we, I mean, it seems like we've got a lot of momentum in Chicago and the greater Midwest. Looking at it, I guess, from afar, do you think, you know, we're on the right track? Are we in the early innings of this? Are we going to continue our, our momentum? Well, I, I think the question I heard was for a hard tech startup, right? Or yeah. just, yeah, okay. So, okay. yeah, um, I think, one really, really important thing for entrepreneurs to do is to build a peer network, right? So it's gonna be really hard if you are the only hard technology company that you sort of know of, right? But one thing that I think uh, we've seen in the New York community is that startups that have similar stakeholders will get together in, in meetups or just sort of informally. And you know, it was a couple of years ago where I started running into like some fashion tech startups. And when you only meet one, you don't really as an investor have a good conception of like what's the solution I'm looking for in that area? Um, who do I introduce that company to? But when you start to meet a bunch and when 10 of them can get together and you know, do a, a panel like this, I, I think that leverages uh, each other for connections, for contacts, for angel investors. And so if there are, you know, Nine other hard tech, you know, companies in the Midwest. I would strongly suggest that you band together with them, form your little ecosystem, because there's no reason. There are definitely people interested in in that area and have expertise and find the companies who have been successful before you. Leverage off of them. Um, you know, it's just a matter of sort of finding and attracting the right people who have that interest in that area. That's great advice. Um, all right, we're getting down the last few seconds here, so I, I guess I'd. 
give you guys kind of the last word um, about you know capital and and how important it has been in your success so far and growing it and, and investments that you're looking at specific to the Midwest. Is this a great place to to raise money and um, are we on the right path? I think we're on the right path. Um, again, I didn't necessarily raise money in Chicago, so I have a totally, uh, my opinion maybe is invalid. Um, kind of where I am, like you have to want to do it there. It is harder there. Um, I mean, it took me like 12 months hustling my ass off to raise that money. Um, now I've got a better idea maybe how to do it differently the next time. Um, that's what we do, live and learn, right? That's right. I just strongly suggest, uh, because of things like social media, you have an unparalleled opportunity to connect to generally whoever you want, right? There's, there's unlimited access to, to people and there's really good ways to sort of follow and, and build relationships over time. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, like most of the, the companies that I've uh, worked with came through relationship-based, you know, when I, I knew Rob May at Backup of High five years before we, uh, you, you know, before the company even launched necessarily. So, uh, you know, if you're thinking about raising money, go get to know the people that you uh, want to be your investors. Don't pitch them right away. Um, talk to them about what you're doing. Get feedback and advice or whatever. Work that over time. Socialize it. Right. Yeah, I totally support what Charlie just said. And, you know, I haven't done a round yet where at some point prior to signing the term sheet, myself and the person who's leading the investment just kind of looked at each other and were like, I just kind of like you. Like, you have to like the person who's investing in your company because you're going to be working together. And so don't go into these conversations with the expectation that you have this PowerPoint deck that you're going to pitch and you're going to get through each bullet point and get to the done or get to the end and then they're going to sign a check. It's way more personal than that. You're going to be working with this person for two to five years in a board. I mean, they're going to be sitting there. They're going to, you report to them. You have to have a very much back and forth positive relationship. And to specifically answer your question, a great idea will get funded, whether it's here or it's in Des Moines. I mean, it will. So if you think you have a fantastic idea, just go start having the conversations and talk about your idea and go meet people who've done similar things to what you're trying to do. Start becoming friends with them, elicit their feedback. You will be funded way sooner than you expect to be. Awesome, well said. All right, Ben, Charlie, Matt, thanks so much, guys. Really appreciate it.